It's October 23rd, 2007, a rainy Tuesday morning, and we're at Noble Environmental Power, Chair Busco. Look at the size of the wind farm now. Every time people drive by, they comment on how these wonderful giant windmills look. And some people uh, have commented tremendously on the first edition of the program about Noble Wind Power. We enjoyed putting it together, and I get calls on my home, and Calvin does almost every day, of people wanting copies of that particular program. The reason we came out on a rainy Tuesday morning was because a giant transformer is on its way here. It'll be set up at the substation along with another similarly sized transformer which already arrived. Our original intention was to be here when the transformer arrived at 9 o'clock, but when we came this morning we were told that it probably won't be here until somewhere close to 1 o'clock this afternoon. So we decided to start our second major program here at Noble Environmental Power. We want to go up the road and get a little view of this wind farm to give you an idea just what these giant monstrosities look like. And maybe per later today, Calvin will get an opportunity to see that, that uh, tremendous item. What is it called? Not a compressor. A transformer. 200 feet long or something. Come on, trucks. We've been given a preview this morning by some of the folks that work here and uh, next door neighbors saying that they do stop traffic. <laughs> I can imagine coming from Westville, New York, what the traffic jam is going to be on Route 22, 122 as it turns on to Route 11, just outside Malone on this way. And as they travel with these giant things down the road, they have to have uh, Verizon trucks and other trucks to hold with their buckets, hold the power lines up so this giant transformer can get just barely under the wires because I understand from the street to the top it's about 15 feet tall and that is about the height of most of these wires crossing the roads. Every time anything involved with these giant uh, windmills, if you will, comes down the road it creates a spectacle and people have been talking about these projects from the very beginning. This is just one of the first projects here in northern New York. There are several more planned already and Hometown Cable will try to bring you the entire story. We're going to take a ride up the road and take a look at this wind farm from another angle. Stay tuned! Well, it's quarter of 10 in the morning on the same day, a uh, rainy Tuesday morning. And we're out in the country. There's a car coming, so Calvin will have to step back for a moment. But we thought we'd come up on the Harrigan Road in the town of Ellenburg off Route 190 that heads down toward Brainerdsville because uh, Darlene back at the Noble office told us this would be a good view of some of the uh, wind towers as they're being built. And this harkens back. Wow, look at the shadows in the it's almost more eerie, isn't it, in this kind of a dark gray day to take a look at these things in the sky. They're kind of a marvel to us and we've had the privilege of being attached to this concept and this program from the very beginning. And as I said earlier in the program, it's generated a great deal of comment from our hometown cable viewers. The sky's moving very quickly today. Not a driving rain, but a persistent rain here. We. Uh, Oh, that, that one is, you can tell the wind is slightly turning that one. Can you see that a little bit? Where Calvin and I are kind of excited to actually see these wind towers, with these huge turbines in operation. And perhaps, I don't know, we, we, we think maybe in a few weeks, maybe some of them will be turning. We're, we're not sure exactly what happens. But when they do, and when they actually start generating power through that big substation that we visited in our first program, that will be uh, just another chapter in this wonderful wind power story here in the North Country. It's something that has garnered a great deal of attention and will continue in the future. And so we'll try to cover this story right from the, right from the very uh, start until it, it ends, and I don't know when it will end because this is only one project. There's the Clinton project, there's the Ellenberg project, there's the Altona project, and who knows how far this wind farm concept uh, will continue before it's finished in the North Country. It is a means of alternative energy, and goodness knows 
Uh, the world needs to find alternative energies with all the discussion we've heard lately in the news media and we happen to be right in the middle of it here in the North Country. We're across the intersection from Route 11 and Route 122 waiting for this giant transformer to arrive from Westville on its way all the way up to the substation outside Cherubusco. It'll be a long process getting there as these uh, telephone companies, Time Warner, Verizon, and perhaps even the National Grid, there's an ISIC truck. Others will have to raise whatever wires are down by the road. Guys are waving at us on the way by. You have to know that this is a hometown cable exclusive. <laughs> now, what other media are gonna come out on a day like today to film this? But we're kinda committed to it, Calvin. Yeah, everybody else is a little smarter than we are, but <laughs> it's still coming down pretty good, but it was coming down a little harder a few minutes ago, so I guess all in all we can't complain. No, you've got a nice, fairly waterproof uh, cover for your camera there. Yep. This is a busy thoroughfare, Route 11. Actually, we're just a short distance outside of the village of Malone. And this is a, kind of a cutoff for people who want to head over toward Messina. They can just turn on Route 22 and head in that way toward Westville. Head Westville, Constable, Fort Covington. This is the, this is the route we all take. This is the one we all take to get over there. And every year I go over there to go camping at Coles Creek. But I think we're getting serious here this morning, aren't we? Huh? We're seeing more and more of these trucks. Uh, we did drive down to... Route 122 a little ways, and we we saw them coming, so we headed back here to this intersection. Uh, there will be some cable wires. We saw some of the Time Warner guys uh, sitting there in uh, Chattagay when we yes, came we by. Yes, we did. Yep. And uh, Niceg, uh, uh, gentleman from Niceg, the one who alerted us to all this. We appreciate uh, Rusty's call to, to tell us about this. And uh, it should be an interesting thing, but their angle here won't be quite as bad as if when they try to get on that uh, Ryan Road off. Uh, Route 11 up by a Dick's Country store. It looks like they're moving again, Gordy. Yeah, when you when you consider the uh, just a tremendous size, I called these towers a monstrosity before, and I meant that in almost an affectionate way because they're so big. Because to me, a whale is a monstrosity, but. Uh, even the parts of these things are huge as we've seen them all go by our houses in the future or in the past. There's a Time Warner truck right there. You know what the state police are going to be doing at this corner, don't you? They'll be, they'll be blocking off the traffic very shortly. Now this is a, supposedly about 200 feet long and it's on uh, three truck beds. Uh, so it the, should be an interesting site. And the wires, uh, they, they tell me uh, generally the wires, the power wires are 15 feet high. And that's just about how high this, this is from the street level to the top. Occasionally you see this uh, long pole on the front of this overside load. That's how they tell. <laughs> that's, that's the indicator. If you hit something and the sparks are flying, you know you better raise it a little bit. That's the indicator. Look at this caravan. Oh, we, we got a parade here, don't we, huh? We got us a convoy. We got us a convoy. I don't know how many people are old enough to remember that song. Uh, you know what? This brings back some bad memories for me, though, Gordy. This is what it looked like during the ice storm when the, all those trucks were here to, to put up those poles. Oh, you can see it, see it down there. I can see it coming. The <laughs> guys from Verizon giving us a little toot on the way. It's, it's kind of, it, you know, it's a piece of history, isn't it? It certainly is. It's an important piece of history. It's uh, it's going to mean, uh, I think, a, a lot of great things. Uh, you and I were uh, driving back from the Harrigan Road down down in this direction and looking at all those uh, all those towers up there, and you realize that the dollars that each one of those is going to put in the pockets of the farmers and homeowners and the residents, property owners that are going to be reaping the, the money from those. It's just it's just incredible the, the dollars that uh, this whole project is going to bring into our community up here. I am so delighted that we came down here. Sometimes Providence leads us. Sometimes we go astray. But every now and again, our guardian angels tell us where to go. And I think we got lucky stopping at this intersection today because there is an absolutely perfect view of that giant transformer.
Yep, and there's one already up at the substation. Uh, we tried to get a view of it on the way by here to, today. They, they've got a lot of structures up since we were there Yeah, the and, last time. And we don't have our hard hat and the vest. <laughs> and That's <stuff>. true. <laughs> <laughs> So we couldn't go on the, the substation property, but uh, seeing this will uh, be an interesting little uh, little view, I think, as it comes around the corner here. I think so. I and hope it doesn't come off our side of the road, but I think they, the guys are checking it all out to make sure everything is secure. It looks like those wires are high enough, high enough right here. Now, I didn't see that little uh, indicator bent when, it, when the guy <laughs> drove by. When he drove under. And after these things get in place, we'll have an opportunity sometime, I'm sure, to go back to the substation. Yes. To, uh, yeah, this is just the start of a, our second episode on this uh, construction of these towers. Uh, as part of this program here that we're starting today on uh, October 23rd, uh, we want to end up talking to the uh, some of the property owners, uh, some of the neighbors, uh, uh, some of the business people in the area who might have had some impact with the, this construction phase and uh, also to some of the uh, leaders of the town government and uh, and the town of Cherubusco, Clinton as, as it's properly called, uh, Altona and Ellenberg. So Yeah, for some people life as they knew it will be changing when, when, when these farms are, are constructed and this is just the first of many. Yes, uh, what we're seeing here today in 2007 is just the beginning. Uh, next year, they'll be putting up uh, similar projects in uh, in uh, Chattagay and in Brainerdsville, uh, which I think is called the town of Belmont. Right. Uh, you know, we all yep. know it as Brainerdsville, just as you know, the town of Clinton is Cherubusco. Uh, and then there's another uh, similar uh, project coming through by a, from another company uh, called Marlboro River, and they're going to be putting up more towers Correct. in the Ellenberg and the Chattagay area, and maybe even out. Not sure about Altona but uh, they'll be putting up more towers next year. So when this is all done by the end of 2008, it should be extremely interesting. And I'm, I feel very privileged that we've been able to uh, uh, be a part of uh, what's happened here and uh, to chronicle this for future generations. Uh, yeah, we hope, we hope the other media are a little bit jealous. <laughs> and we don't mind a bit. These hometown ca cable cameras have been in a lot of places uh, where I'm not sure the, I, th I think maybe the angels fear to tread some of the places you and I have covered. I, and looking at that, look at all the wheels that are involved underneath that. And imagine how much pressure there is on every one of those tires. And understand why these guys are checking everything very carefully before they make this major turn on the Route 11. I have no clue how much that huge transformer weighs. But uh, it's a great deal, and at some point in time, maybe even before this day is finished, we'll be able to find out. You know that baby's heavy, though, right? Yeah, there's got to be a, you know, a tremendous amount of weight. Uh, it's been sitting somewhere in Westville. Not sure how it got there, if it came in uh, on the St. Lawrence, or exactly how yeah. it got there. But uh, it's been sitting in Westville for the last uh, several days. And uh, again, we appreciate that call from Rusty at night. <laughs> It sounded oh, like a train. Coming, baby. A Did train. you hear that? Doesn't that sound like a train? I hear the train are coming. Yeah. And we're going to... We may have oh, to move yeah, up, we... the, up the way a little bit. We'll see if uh, we're within his uh, scope of turning here. So originally we were going to get this as it went on the uh, Ryan Road, but I think this is just uh, as good a spot as any to get this the maybe, feel for this. Maybe even better. We better get back the other way a little bit. Probably have to pull way over here before he pulls over. Traffic is being stopped in both directions by the New York State Police. It takes a lot more than just uh, one lead vehicle and one in the back to, to get this happening. You can see, look how close they are to the wires as they come under. Just take a look up there. There's not much more than a foot to spare, is there? Oh, less than that, probably, yeah. Burke Halter Special Transport out of uh, Mobile, Alabama and Columbus, Mississippi. They got a few spare tires on there. And you got a guy that's got to be out in the rain. You see, he's raising and lowering things. Watch him operate. Apparently, there's some uh, 
I don't know if he's turning or if he's raising and lowering things. Well, but I knew somebody had a ride on the back. You can see of this it. other part is actually. Uh, let's get over here. See, it's come off this other vehicle here. It's just kind of it's almost inches off the road. Oh, that's something else to consider, isn't it, huh? Yeah. Truly amazing. So it's not the transformer itself that's so long, but because they had to balance the weight, as Darlene said, yep, right? Yep, Darlene they Gilbert have to have it on three the... separate units. And when he used the word, the guy from the power company used the word articulated, he knew exactly what he was talking about, because this is articulated. Now he's got to make sure that he stays away from the guide rails on the other side. This is like trying to pilot an aircraft, you know? Oh, definitely. This is like going through the locks with a, <laughs> a big ship, I'd imagine. This, now he's got to straighten up in the front here again, and uh, this is uh, really a... Uh, I think he's done got, it. You've got somebody in the back doing the same thing here. Yeah. On the controls. It's, it's the two guys on the vehicle with, with the controls and the driver in the, inside that are all coordinating their efforts just to make this turn. I think we ought to sell this footage to the major news media tonight. New York City, there you'd make the nightly news with this one for sure. That's an incredible operation here. Once again, for the people who just turned their televisions on and wonder what is going on, we're watching the transport of a giant transformer on its way to uh, the substation at Cherubusco for the Noble Wind Energy Project. The second of two giant transformers which will be installed there before power can be generated and set along the grid. We've uh, seen quite a parade here today of not only state police but various power companies and telephone companies and cable companies, and cable companies all along the way to make sure the wires are out of the way and there isn't any serious damage and I think that was kind of a masterful operation as they made it completely around the corner and now they're as they're holding traffic up the rig will pull over to the driver's side and we were right when we were told once it gets going on the straight it doesn't take up much more than a lane of traffic does it no but uh, obviously they can't travel too fast when they're on the straightaway because you've got all these articulated situations yeah. here that you got to keep in a straight line and that, that's uh, I don't know how they lock this in. You've got to be able to go around corners. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's an interesting little project. Yeah, when, when I heard about the people riding up in the back, I was all I could think of was the, the big hook and ladder trucks in the olden days that they had at fire companies. But this is mar much more sophisticated than that. Rather than a steering wheel, they've got a various levers that they have, yeah. have to negotiate. Now they've got to back up all these vehicles here because they can't, they're still in the, the wrong lane. They're still in the left lane there. I don't know if they're going to back up and go ahead or what they're going to do. That police car is backed up as far as he can. So they got, they've got to get out of that left lane. They're not in England here. They're, <laughs> they're over in the U.S. So they got to go move into the right lane. And they've got a, a good half mile of traffic I guess they're going to let some of the traffic come through. There we go. Yeah, we go, we'll stand a little bit off the road here. They're going to let the traffic that was backed up come through before they move out into the main highway and get going. Once again, uh, we're doing this all on the uh, 23rd day of October 2007, the second in a series of programs on uh, the Noble Wind Energy Power. Uh, we're at the intersection of Route 122 and Route 11, right outside the village of Malone. And this caravan, if you will, has got to make its way from Westville, where it started sometime early this morning, I presume after 9 o'clock, and it will end up at the substation um, in Cherubusco later on. We're in real time, it's quarter of 11 in the morning, and so uh, they're making general progress. So maybe by 1 o'clock they'll be there. Yep, we'll be somewhere else, but uh, <laughs> it was nice to get this anyway and make it part of this program. And again, the uh, general purpose of this program is to talk to the, the people who are impacted and uh, get an idea of, of the uh, community leaders, uh, what they think, what the property owners think of all this. But uh, this is a good start to that. We've got another hour and a half or so of programming coming up, so people will stick around and watch that.
It's very interesting because they're now trying to clear the traffic out of this area so they can get this giant transformer on the road once again and head it up. There probably isn't much more to see here at this location, but... Oh. Well, we might as well uh, close this part and uh, maybe within a week or two or maybe even longer than that. When the, but once the uh, blade starts spinning, we'll come back and continue this program that people are watching right now. You know I want to be there. So, folks, if you like it, tell your friends about it and stay tuned to Hometown Cable. You're going to feel like a yo-yo when we finish with you. This program has oh. been all over the place. We started this segment of the Wind Farm story on Route 22 and Route 11 on October 23rd, 2007, when that gigundous transformer came down the road with a escorts and flagmen and people riding on top and front and back. And as I recall, Calvin, it was pouring rain pitchforks that day, and we'd jump out of the car. And what we won't do in the interest of letting people know what's happening in the North Country. This is the wind farm story that we started way back when in 2007, not really knowing when these wonderful big blades would be turning and generating electricity and it's been i have to say it's been one of the most exciting things we've ever done on hometown cable and now we're on april 7th easter is come and gone spring has sprung that's why we have these very heavy jackets on today it's about 40 degrees but we do have beautiful sunshine and we've got two people who are going to tell us everything we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot your name already. It's Lisa Vino. Lisa Vino from Malone, Chris. which is even better. And Kip? Kip Young from Chattagay. Okay, Lisa, what's your position with Noble? I'm with Asset Management. I'm Project Coordinator. And so you've been talking to people, right? I've made a lot of new friends. And you know, as we mentioned before, we pushed the Calvin push the on button over there. This, these wind farms are, are people are really getting behind them in this area, aren't they? They are. They are. The support from the community is just outpouring. It's been great. So we're we're standing. And they're excited. Uh, in the in, is this the Allenberg part of the project? Yes. And we're right next to Clinton, right, Kip? That's correct. And there's so many things going on in the North Country. We're going to have these wonderful towers turning almost everywhere. We're planning Altona. Mm -hmm. Altona's Ellenberg. project is um, starting with uh, contacting the landowners over there. We had a wonderful landowner meeting um, to give them the direction of how the construction phase will be taking place and giving them contact names and people putting the face with the name so they can contact us and if there's any questions, concerns, we're happy to hear and listen and hopefully give them what they need to know. Noble Environmental Energy is a relatively new company, but boy is it on the map. Yes. There aren't very many people who don't know it exists. How did you get involved with them? Oh, oh boy. Actually, um, prior to coming on to Noble, I was running a hotel down in Malone. So when <laughs> Noble first came, what a transition, yeah, right? When Noble first came to the area, I made a lot of great contacts there um, as they were developing and starting the whole series of getting to the stage where we are right now. So. So now you're. Uh, do you uh, do you organize meetings of these people or what? Actually, what do you do on a regular basis? We do. We've got a great team um, of outreach people. Um, any question or concern anybody ever has, you know, if I'm unable to answer it, I will certainly put them in the proper hands I bet you to be able. It. I bet you not everything. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so not everything, but it's it's great learning, great experience, and I'm so happy to be with them. Did you study the whole all these projects before you started actually getting out in the field, or did you? Uh, Learn by the seat of your pants, as they say. It's, it's a lot of reading. It's a lot of research. It's a lot of follow through, follow up. Um, it's every day is a learning experience. You well, learn something new every day. Are you dealing with politicians, businessmen? <laughs> I certainly try not to know. I'm not a politician. Uh, but I mean, I just wondered what kind you're meeting just average John Q citizens uh, mm -hmm. or business people? We, or? we attend the town board meetings. Um, I'm working on another project and very closely with the town supervisors um, for Ellenberg, Clinton, and Altona. 
and the town historians and whoever wants to be on that committee doing some projects and great, great people. We're going to go back and forth a little bit here, if you don't mind, yep. Kip. You're a local guy. Yep, so I'm from Chattagay. I've been up here for about... We can't uh, hold that against him, right? No, <laughs> for about 15 years. Uh, I was currently employed with uh, Borolex, a small biomass plant right next door to us. Um, yep. And I joined this team in August of 2007. So what, what actually is your... Uh, duties with these guys? I'm the uh, North Country plant manager, so I'm responsible for the Clinton, the Ellenberg, the soon-to-be Altona, and Chattagay sites. Actually, all these sites will be almost contiguous right next to each other once they get an, an operation. It'll be just one big giant wind farm when it's all done. Won't it? uh, we're going to treat it as one big giant wind farm. Uh, we'll be building a building down on Route 11 uh, for the operations and the maintenance end of it this summer. How did you first get interested in it? Oh, well, I was in it. hard to avoid it when these things are all <laughs> over the place, but. We, uh, some of my uh, old counterparts from days past uh, were involved in the early stages of this and they contacted me when they found out I was still here and uh, asked me if I was interested in coming to Wind and, and I was. You know, it's it's been such an exciting project for all of us, and I hope we've been able to portray that through the, the lens of Calvin's hometown cable camera, because, you know, I had no concept ahead of time until I talked to Allison, who's standing behind Calvin <laughs> over there, who was the biggest chicken when it came to turning the camera on today. But she's a, a great gal and got us started, introduced us to this project in our first program, we traced uh, these towers from the time they first started right till the last things got on and those blades were first turned on. And when we drove away, I said, I cannot wait to see those babies whipping around. Did you have any idea what they were like before you got involved? Oh uh, yeah, actually I'm originally from Lawville and there's another wind farm Lawville's down there. even better. So I got to see, uh, over the course of the last year, I'm actually be built, some be built, uh, some of the startups on those. So I, I had a pretty good feel of what that's, was going to happen. Is that Tug Hill? Is that part yes, of Tug Hill down there? Yes. I was talking with a, a, a gentleman who uh, runs an electrical contracting business down there the other day, and he's telling me about that. And I said, "Let me tell you what we got up in our place here." <laughs> so you're you were you were brought up there and then moved up here. Yes. Yep. All right. We got to track the whole thing through. Okay. So now you, you got involved before these towers were totally built? Yeah, we showed up in about August as an operations and a maintenance crew to uh, watch some of the final construction going on so we had some idea what was underneath these machines. Um, we went through the commissioning process with GE and now we've just entered into the operating stage. Uh, we actually have six of the machines that are spinning right now under the ownership of Noble. So we're responsible to keep those six running and Hopefully today we'll pick up about nine more. We uh, had a couple of visits to the substation as it was being built, and the remarks I got was, my gosh, that's a big thing. But guess what? It has to be. Yeah, the substation is, uh, is fully energized now, and we are uh, working our way through. We've done all the testing there, and we're now actually in the process of working through the, uh, the field circuits out, in, out into each site. Uh, all of Ellenberg has been tested out and is uh, up and running as far as the collection parts. Um, GE is in there now doing the commissioning, the final commissioning of the turbines. Um, Saturday we started to go into the Clinton circuits which also has three and uh, one of them, though, one, circuit one was energized on Saturday and hopefully by the end of today we have circuit two on. Oh, really? By the end of today? Now that doesn't mean we're going to have turbines spinning on them. That just means that the collection system is ready to go. Um, I would say by the end of this week, uh, we should see some turbines spinning in Clinton. It's it's really great because because people who haven't driven past here who watch this on television have no idea what's happening, and they you know people are saying well how come they're not generating electricity? It takes time. There are steps. There there's a lot of steps. Even the process that we're going through right now is very detailed and has to be followed strictly to, uh, for everyone's safety.
Now, did you, uh, what was your education background? I mean, did... I've got a two-year degree from a community college in industrial electronics and uh, have been working in power plants for about the last 18 years. Oh, you have? So, yeah. But still, there's a lot of new stuff here. Isn't Everything's it? new to me on this. I'm <laughs> still trying to uh, grasp the the uh, the terrain, I guess, as you'd say. I'm used to working in a one plant facility where everything's inside a confined space or confined area, and here it's uh, we're stretched out over 30 miles of access roads. That's nice to be able to get out. <laughs> a lot of truck time. Breathe in this North Country air and burn that good diesel fuel and good gasoline. All right, so we've got how many turning? Six? We own six. There's actually about 20 of the machines that are up and running right now. Six are under our custody, and uh, we should pick up nine more today, and uh, we'll gain probably, uh, we'll pick them up in groups of 10. That's how we've been turning them. G's been turning them over to us, so um, it's going well. We have we were uh, we had a great start up. We came out of the gate running, and we hope to keep it that way. So what's happening? These are turning. They're generating power? That's right. And where's the power going right now? Right now it's all being collected into the substation and from there it's traveling uh, towards Messina. The draw on the 230 line that we're on is actually a, uh, a westerly draw so it's pulling into Messina and from there... Right now it's doing that? Yes. All right, that's what I wanted to hear, man. <laughs> no kidding. So you're actually you're making power, being collected, and it's on the lines? It's on the lines, yes sir. And when do you think that all of them will be turning here? We hope to have uh, all of Ellenberg up and um, running by the end of this month and uh, I would say Clinton is probably going to follow that by maybe about uh, three weeks. Because the people who live here are very interested too. They pass these things every day. If you could have heard my family, I stayed home because they went to a baby shower and that's one of those things that I wasn't invited to. But they came back all excited. Not about the baby shower, but about the windmills turning out here, the turbines turning in this area. So it has generated a lot of local comment. Yeah, we we try to talk to as much as we can to the people out in the field. Uh, there's a lot of questions that we can answer for them, and, and uh, we're willing to answer them. Yeah. So you you come down here every day? Do you go from site to site? Yeah, my office is right in Cherubusco, but uh, we're on the roads from 7 in the morning till uh, 7 at night usually. So. Any of our viewers who missed the first part of... Uh, this program, what a shame, because we laid all the groundwork. But if you drive down Route 11, you won't be missing these uh, turbines, will you? No, they're, they're pretty visible. They're pretty visible, right from the road and not too far away. We're just up on a little side road. On a, As I said, the seventh day of April, I thought it was going to be a little warmer, Lisa, mm -hmm. today. It's <laughs> probably in the low 40s, but uh, this, is this is what you call a <laughs> chill factor. We may have to stand very close to, to protect each other here. So what What's uh, next on the agenda for you? Oh boy, um, getting Altona, getting going forward with Altona. We've got the Chateaugay project um, starting, so it's it's leaving construction, going to operations. It's a little crazy right now. You know, there's a lot of history involved. First of all, there's a lot of history in this land all around us, but we were talking before the camera started about Feinberg Park and that historical project up there. What can you tell us? For the McGregor Powerhouse? Yeah. yeah. One of um, the projects that we do with Noble is um, historical uh, preservation. We're going to be giving back, you know, something to the community, and I've got three different projects up here, um, as well as other wind projects that we have, other areas. Um, restoring buildings, um, taking care of towns, uh, historical documentation, putting them all um, like on a needs assessment on a CD format, so God forbid a fire, all of it's right there protected. Um, everything gets scanned. Um, Working with the towns and town supervisors, the historians are fantastic people. Aren't they fun people? Yes, yes. Good, good gals, good gals. Um, that's, again, making lots of new friendships and working together and coming as a team. Some of the local people are familiar with that uh, that 
project for power generating way back in the day up there at mm -hmm. the Feinberg Park, the so-called McGregor building. project. Beautiful building. And won't it be nice to see that finished and it'll become a tourist attraction all over again, yes. won't it? Open it up as um, educational purpose, uh, community center, that's our goal. Um, it's, it's a beautiful building. I'd love to see it now go to ruins. You know, yeah. you, you have a lot of uh, buildings that are just abandoned and they just crumble. So well, hopefully nice we can go for a picnic together. in the summertime mm -hmm. and then bring the kids up there and educate them a little bit about the minor history connected with it. And mm -hmm. It has been a very interesting project to work on. Yeah. Did you know about it before you went up there? I did that? not. No kidding. No, I did not. So that's so no this wonder is, it's exciting to meet the historians and learn what yeah, happened. Yeah, it is. Back it in is. the day. It is. Yeah. It's, it's been great fun. So you'll be working there and you'll still be meeting with local groups and around mm -hmm. here? Yeah, we have a committee for each of the towns. Like we just did, um, Noble just had uh, open houses for each of the towns, Clinton, Ellenberg, and Altona. Um, some of the locals brought out their personal archive that any um, the photographs, documents, diaries, anything that they have so we can scan it because that's your town's history. It's all for your town. You know, I love that. We talk about it all the time about giving back. Mm -hmm. And isn't it nice when Go Noble comes to town and decides they want to give back to the communities and enhance and preserve mm -hmm. and educate people about their local history. And guess what? Every one of these wonderful turbines is now a part of history, isn't it? It sure is. A big it's... part of history. What a chapter here. Yeah, it's, it's exciting to be involved in it. You know, it must be personally exciting for you yeah, to be involved in it. It was neat to see it, you know, to be able to walk, drive by the substation and say I started that substation up. I mean, that's, that's part of history right there, so I'm glad to be there. I wonder how many different parcels and farmers and individuals and businesses have been involved here. Just, it's almost beyond measure. It is. <clears throat> um, it, again, it's... It, the contact with the locals, um, again, making good friendships. You know, you stop in because you're driving by and they wave and all of a sudden you're there for an hour <laughs> playing catch up. So These people it's in great. the North Country, we've said it before, even though you're from Lowville, that's the North, that's still North <laughs> Country, right? I think so. It's a, it's a good place to live and work and we think, we, we think they're the best people in the whole wide world here in the North Country and for the most part they have so totally embraced this idea, it thrills Calvin and I to have watched this from the beginning because, you know, being involved with the media for so many years myself, I saw this, con this whole concept and studied it early just so I would know what was coming down the road and to watch it happen and actually have the cameras here. Mm -hmm. And part of this program today, we'll be talking with some of those local townspeople, with the people in the stores and the community and the farmers and the politicians to see what this actually means to them. And it's a huge step. Yeah, it certainly is. We may not have any green grass today, but we're talking green here, aren't we? That's huh? right, yes. Yeah. So you're you're involved you're interested in in this whole di idea of electricity and alternative power. Yeah, I would, the last plant that I, that I was at was actually a biomass plant, and uh, we were considered green energy there. Um, so it's a uh, it's a new and upcoming thing, and uh, it, it's where it's probably where we're going to head. We better be. We need to be. I mean, that's my little comment for the day. We better be heading in those directions. So. If we come back in, uh, let's say if we come back in June, what's going to be different around here? Well, hopefully the grass will be green. <laughs> it better be or I'm going right back to Morrisonville. Hopefully by June you should see uh, two complete wind parks. That, that's what our goal is. Won't that be beautiful? Of course, That'll sometimes you have to move the goalposts as you're as you're finishing these projects because I think our viewers know that this is very complicated. Right. There's Not to a, mention just the building and commissioning of them, but there are a lot of legal ramifications. It, it's a long, uh, daunting task to take it all the way from a development stage to a, a final operating finished wind park. Um, 
that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions up here is that it should happen overnight and well, it, it's I said that really not going it doesn't to. happen overnight no and, and, and they wouldn't want it to happen overnight no and everything has its place and time right it's place and time and mother nature is a big factor in each and every one of them it's uh yeah we only had the snowiest winter in history up here <laughs> that um, we did i'm sure it snowed a little bit in vermont too allison yeah it snowed everywhere it's unbelievable and the difference in the elevation makes, because we it snowed for 10 hours at my house the other day, and down in here in Malone, there was hardly any new snow, I understand. Yeah, we only got a couple inches. That's probably why you guys didn't come up to visit me on that given day. <laughs> but it's nice to see sunshine in 40 degrees, and yesterday 50 degrees as we're recording this on the 7th day of April. What would you like to have the people of the North Country know about what what's going to happen in the future? Anything special? Any big meetings coming up later in the summer? Anything you want to let people know? Um, we uh, will be doing a ribbon cutting. We've got a ribbon cutting coming up. I like up ribbon for, cuttings. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll invite you. <laughs> um, we do have, um, you know, the, the support and the outreach to have all the people who have helped us and Noble build this and work as a team getting this all together. Um, just a great day of celebration and good fun. It will be. Yeah. Yeah. And when and when these projects are finished, guess what? There'll be more. You may be on the road again, Kip. No. You never know. No. 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 I think I'm gonna stay. You gonna stick around here? Yeah. For the duration. Anything else you want to add? Uh, we this? we've actually been working with. Uh, Clinton Community College a little bit no on kidding. developing a program for Wintex. Um, these are the guys that are actually going to go out and work on the target. Wonderful tournaments. idea. Um, you know, these young guys coming, I have a lot of people come and ask me for a job every day and uh, the best thing they can do is, is get at least a two-year degree in, in electronics or some time, some type of the electrical field if they, you know, if they want to stay up here and work on these this machines. This is the beauty of, of uh, community colleges and Clinton Community College, especially with their tech center that they built over the last few years, the work they've done on that campus. And the whole concept is to train people for the age we're entering, isn't it? Yes, and that's, that's one of been one of the hardest things for me as a plant manager up here is to find... Uh, we always say the worst part about going to work is, is getting to work because we, we climb about 180 feet before we really do anything and and it's a it's a challenge to get to the top it's a workout um, but uh, the younger guys there's it, it, there's a big spot for them in this industry it's a new industry there's the demand for those types of people are are large you can write your own ticket here it's, so you've been talking with them yeah we've uh, we've discussed some course material with them it's in the infancy stage right now and uh, there is a couple of colleges that are in the midwest that do it now um but uh i mean it's not only in this area that they see these things going up the opportunity to move around this place the united states is just incredible incredible at, at well, that you know what we're gonna watch that, and when it happens, we'll give you full credit. No, for no, I just planting the <laughs> seed up there. Yeah, no, I I just like to see these, these young guys coming out of school that don't know what they want to do and want to stay in the area. There's not a lot of opportunity for those young people, but uh, there's a big one right here coming. That's great, boy. That, there's a testimonial right there. With Noble coming in, it's you know the higher rate for the locals has been great, you know. Yeah, I've got uh, got nine people hired on right now, and uh, there's actually only seven of them are the, are uh, are local guys, right? You know, within 40 miles of the radius Nobody's of the park. Nobody's tried to do that from the very beginning, and we've met. We I know personally many people who've worked for these organizations and the the uh, organizations that are attached to this whole project from the beginning, and uh, I like what I see so far. Mm -hmm. And, well, you know, we've talked about being insulated here in the North Country from a lot of the problems the rest of the nation has, but there are jobs up here. Well, they're coming. I mean, I'm I'm still looking for some more people. We're going to need more people for these other parks. And one of the downfalls that, that I've seen so far in the hiring process is, is uh, you bring guys in from, you know, the south or something, and they get up here and see this winter, and they don't stay long. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're in mud season now. It's not quite yeah, the same, yeah. but that's pretty bad, too, sometimes. Uh, you know, we talk a lot. <laughs> You're making me laugh, but we, we promote this area and we tell people how beautiful it is and 
you know, and they come up here and they get involved with the, the skiing and the cross-country skiing. And we do have things that happen in the winter. We all don't stay in next to that cozy fireplace when it's snowing outside. But we're a hardy bunch up here. Yeah, you need thick blood. And we do have a, a, a good work, a good North Country workforce here. Yes, I As agree. is evidenced by these two people from from Lowville and Malone, come on, the, <laughs> the salt of the earth. I, I, I know it's been cold out here with a little bit of a chill factor today on the seventh day of April, but uh, I want to thank both of you for being with us, both of you for what you do, what you decided to do. The company should be proud to have both of you on the payroll. Well, I'm happy See what to be I can here. do about doubling that check All right. that for you. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful day, and thanks again. Thank you. Thanks. Well, we didn't have to take the camera and the microphone is very far to see Dick Decos. How you doing? Good. 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 It's been a while. Last time we talked to you, we talked about Orville Gibson, didn't we? That's yeah. right. That's right. We took a ride down to the uh, the birthplace and that was it was all very neat till I slammed his fingers in the back door and I went <laughs> downhill after that. <laughs> I recovered though. I recovered. Oh, did you really? Yeah. I think oh, yeah. you had to play that weekend. I had to play. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, anyway, we're back again today, and I know you've been right in the middle of this thing for a long time. And isn't it? You said you love to look out in the morning and see those babies turn. Turning. Yeah, the last few, uh, you know, last little over a week now, they've had they've had some running, and uh, yeah, it's quite fascinating. To look out the back window and, and and see them turn. And then we've been, you know, been had a pretty good bird's eye view of the whole project ever since it from started. From the beginning, and yeah, the, right from the beginning. The uh, guys and gals stopping in here on their yeah, way by, and so yeah. much activity right outside yeah. your door. Had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of conversations with the with the workforce, with the uh, you know, with the noble people, and of course the uh, you know the landowners. <clears throat> that are involved in the project. Of course, we do business with, more, with a lot of them too. So we really had, uh, you know, a good, good hands-on experience with this whole thing and uh, and seeing it uh, develop from from start to finish. And it's pretty close to finish now, and everybody's uh, quite excited about it. That's why we came down here today on the seventh day of April because the last time we did a show, actually the beginning of this portion of the show was October 23rd when they had this giant transformer coming up the road. Yeah. And we were down at the corner of 122 and it was raining like the old Harry. And they had flag people and cops and power people and <laughs> spotters. And that thing was gigundous when it came up. Through. Yeah, there was uh, two of them <clears throat> that made the corner here. So we we got a good first hand look at those two. Yeah, that was that was something to see. The, the Just the complexity of the trailer that they used and the, uh, you know, they had, they had articulated, uh, very, uh, yeah, articulated like fire trucks, quite a few sections, probably six, six sections that turned and it was, it was amazing. People who drive by on Route 11 and see them in a distance have no idea how tall these things are and how, you don't know how long one of those blades is till you see it going by on a truck. Right. Aren't they amazing? The size yeah, when, of that stuff. When they're up in the air, they, you know, they, they don't look as tall as they actually are. The blades are, I think the blades are about 120 feet long and uh, to the uh, center of the turbine it's uh, it's about 250 260 feet so uh, once you get the 120 foot blade up that high it doesn't look as quite as impressive as they do on the ground when they're on the ground they're very impressive but you guys have look been it. looking at them from the very beginning and I come up here only sporadically and today was the first day I saw them turning and I can't tell you what a good feeling that was to realize that there's real power going out of those things yes uh, it is quite amazing uh, I mean, according to the, the calculations that we've seen in the figures, <clears throat> each one of those turbines can power up to 500 of average households. So uh, we took a ride last night, and there was uh, there was 15 of them turning. So 15 times 500, we were think already powering think about that, huh? quite a few homes, uh, you know, across the area. And who's, who's ever buying power off off the grid? They're they're getting the availability and the use of that power. So when you think there will be hundreds before they're finished, this you know 67 here, a bunch here, some over there. Yeah, they're they're. Uh, I mean, the area is is a is a prime site for it. That's that's why they're here. Uh, the wind study maps that they've all, all these different companies, Noble and uh, the Marble River Project, also yeah. they've uh, you know they've studied the wind maps and and you know this this whole area northeast northeast corner of New York State has got very very favorable day-to-day -day steady winds 
that make this project uh, a project that will well it will pay for itself and it will produce a real a real amount of power that uh, you know that that'll do a lot of good for a lot of people and it'll replace a lot of barrels of oil I hope too. Oh, that's you know we were just thinking about that you know with the, with the price of gas as we're recording this. We saw, I saw two stations along Route 3 outside of Plattsburgh that were selling regular gas for 355.9 yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, the gas, uh, <clears throat> and, you know, being in the gas business, um, I mean, the price can change 10 or 15 cents in one day. In one day. In one day. And, I mean, it used to be years ago, if it changed a half a cent a day, that was, yeah. everybody took a notice of that. But now it can change 8, 10, 12, 15 cents just in a day. It can go up and can go down. But it's, it seems to steadily, uh, it seems to go up 10 and come down 3, and then <laughs> go up another 8 or 10. It, it's steadily going up. I mean, even if they give you a little bit of a, you know, a break on it for a couple of days, it, it goes right back up again. So you've always been a fan of the alternative energy thing anyway. Well, you? yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of ways to produce alternative energy that need to be addressed. I mean, wooden power is just one one part of it, and uh, it, it's it's a very favorable part because it doesn't produce any pollution of any kind, which is which is which is great. There's not very many things that produce energy that don't produce some kind of pollution, you know. And uh, for the actual amount of space that that these turbines actually take up on the surface, it's uh, they're pretty efficient for you know the, the amount of space that they use. They actually use they don't use much space when it's all said and done. Everything is landscape put back in place. You know, we're talking maybe a at the most a 50 foot diameter circle. 50 you, foot footprint right there. Yeah, at, at the most. There, yeah. At the most. It won't even be that much, I don't think. You know, we've talked about with some of the engineers before and some people who know a lot more about it than I do, but you said you look out there in the morning and you actually count the revolutions. Yeah, you can kind of tell uh, how much wind you got that day. You can, uh, you know, you can, you can time the, uh, time the blades, see how long it takes one blade to make a turn around and then, you know, divide that into 60 seconds and figure out how many how many turns they make a minute and um, I think the average the average speed they like them to turn is from what I've gathered is about 15 15 revolutions per minute and um, uh, the other day I looked out I figured they were doing about 12 to 13 and then a couple days later I think uh, it, we had a little more when they were uh, maybe 15 18 you know so it does vary but uh, I mean they have the technology to, to take that variable speed but to put it into a steady flow of electricity and supply a steady a steady amount of current into the grid so I mean, isn't it amazing the, the when the wind gets too the, strong that it shuts down it shuts down at uh, I think at approximately 50 to 55 mile an hour wind they will they will automatically shut down and uh, <clears throat> and, and the brakes come on and they they're locked in position until until, until the wind goes down isn't that incredible for, you know for safety reasons and so on I think that's pretty amazing with generating that much power I think the blades are actually uh, the pitch can can vary on the blades, can it? Can feather. feather the blades? Yeah, yes, I think it, I remember it's very similar to an that. airplane propeller. Yeah, isn't you know, it they, amazing they can change the pitch so they'll take more or less wind. Yeah. So actually, the more wind you have, the more they can uh, they can feather the blade out, so it doesn't yeah. take as much wind and maintains that steady uh, 15 to 20 revolutions per minute, uh, regardless of how much wind. When you get a lower wind, they they flatten out into the wind, so the wind pushes a little harder. Well, you said them. it's an ideal area for it, and it's got to be because you haven't seen them stop yet, have you? Uh, not really, no. Since uh, since the first one started, and uh, I get a good view from my upstairs window. Oh, do you? And uh, every morning when I'm looking out there, they're they're turning. So uh, yeah, that was the big one of the big reasons to come here is we have, you know, we have day to day steady supply of wind on a day to day basis. And um, <clears throat> I know on the ground some days it may seem calm, but at, at the height of the turbine height, yeah, you know, think 250 about that. feet, it's, uh, it's pretty steady. Yeah. It's pretty steady wind supply up there. And uh, so that's, that's why our area is so well suited for it. I mean, other places, they, they wouldn't be able to support a project like this. They just don't have the wind. But uh, everybody has some wind, but not, not on a steady basis. I mean, since I've been living here in this corner, well, my dad came here in 1962, and uh, the wind has always been a, a great topic of the conversation here people pumping gas out front and coming in their, the hat, hats. their hats are blowing <laughs> off and the, down the road uh, and uh, yeah. it, you know it's so it's uh, I know if my dad were here today he'd be he'd be totally fascinated by, uh, I bet he would by be. this because oftentimes he would he would say joking at that time what a great place this would be for a windmill you know when somebody come in their hat just blew off in the yard and, 
That was a... You know, this making power from, from the wind is not at all a new concept. It's been done for hundreds of years, you know. You remember as a kid seeing in the books in, yeah. in Holland. Yeah, wind power is... Uh, they've, they've used a wind power. Farmers yeah. have used oh, yeah. wind power to pump water. Pump water, sure. But this takes it to a whole new level. Yes, it does. And, uh, and you, know, you know what, I'm sure that they're going to improve uh, as time goes on. I mean, I, I'm even seeing now on some other... <clears throat> um, some other types of turbines are developing, which look totally different than these. Really? They're vertical, and they turn this way. But You've they're, got to I be mean, they're, kidding. Uh, I haven't seen those yeah, yet. Yeah, they're not on a commercial side. I should side have known yet. you would have read about those. I. But they, uh, they have them now that are that'll that'll run in even less wind. They're on a smaller scale. They're not on the grand scale that these are on. But uh, eventually, uh, an individual, well, even now, an individual can purchase one of these and. Uh, some of them put out uh, 10 kilowatts, which is that'd probably run, you know, pretty much run your house. And you can buy those today, and they're uh, they're a vertical turbine. But I mean, they're, as I say, they just keep developing this technology, and it'll get better and better. And you know, by the time these turbines are ready to be replaced, I'm sure they'll have something that'll generate more power, maybe with even less wind, or, or it'll generate a lot more power. It'll just. But in the meantime, it's been hasn't it been interesting for you just to be on this corner and watch the whole thing develop? From oh yeah. The very beginning. It really has. Uh, Meet great yeah, people. Seen, <clears throat> I've never seen so many uh, cranes and, and lifts and. Because <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff to be lifted and put in place on this project, but uh, you know, and uh, you know, and I, I got to say that the uh, all of the. Um, the contractors that were involved have all been really nice people to deal Everybody with. Everybody we've met, we've super. dealt with most of them yeah. and uh, dealt with their workers on a day-to-day -day basis and got to know some of them uh, by first name and uh, see them every day. And, uh, and really, uh, the whole project and, and the people from Noble have all been very, very nice and upfront. And uh, we've we've had no, and, you know, whenever we've had a concern, uh, you know, we had a lot of questions in the beginning and. And they, they were hard questions for them, I think, yeah. but they, uh, they, they satisfied, uh, gave us some satisfactory answers, and, uh, you know, we haven't agreed on everything, let's put it that way. Well, fun but, would uh, life be if we agreed true. on everything, Richard. But we've, uh, we've been able to uh, come up with a solution that was uh, workable and satisfactory. It's nice to see local people being put to work here. We talked this morning uh, uh, with a young guy named Kip from Lowville who settled down in this area, is working for these guys on their projects, to energizing these turbines, and he's been uh, negotiating with Clinton Community College to start some some wind tech classes up there, mm -hmm. people getting degrees and, and uh, learning what they need to know to go to work for companies like this, because it's, it's hard to find people who have that kind of expertise. It's so new, you know? True. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a developing, definitely yeah. a developing technology. Uh, and there are a lot of others out there that are very interesting, but uh, this one happened to be the one that suited our particular area, and uh, it suited our town. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of open area here, and, and the, the benefits uh, far outweighed, you know, any negative aspects that uh, came along with it. So, and the, the majority of the people looked over all the facts, and, and uh, you know, the majority of the people decided it was a good thing for the area, and. They're they're pretty much all excited to to see him get started and and see the project uh, you know coming to a, a conclusion and and then see how it's going to go. But I, I think it'll go very well. From, can't uh, what it, what can't wait to see people. how it grows when they're all turning. When they're all turning, it'll be a, it'll be something to see. When you get up on West Hill and look down here, you're going to see a lot of energy being produced. Boy, can you just imagine once. that? Yeah. You know the size yeah. of that substation. Every time we go by it, you take a look in there yeah. and figure what's happening. And how it's getting out on the grid. It's yep. amazing to me. You know, it's, it's up to that point right now. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking right. with us, Dick. We know you're a busy guy. Thanks for giving us a few minutes you're of welcome. your time. You're welcome. Keep strumming. I'm not going to get in the car with you this I time. I don't blame you one bit. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Very Dick well. Decaws at uh, Dick's Country Store of Music. You know what they say about a day late and a dollar short? Well, it's a day later on the 8th of April, and I don't know if we're a dollar short. We'll find out when we finish. We're in the Altona Town Hall with Supervisor Larry Ross. How are you, Larry? Very good. This Very is a uh, long ways from the wrestling mats of NAC. <laughs> yes, there is. When did you retire from teaching? This is my second year out. Wow. Yeah. Long and colorful history down uh, there. Yeah. 
Great time. Great school. How many years? Well, 34. Isn't that something? Seven years old when he went down there. Wait a minute. <laughs> Lights are coming on. Oh, man. We I got... didn't fib either. <laughs> uh, isn't that amazing? Well, of course, we're talking about wind power and uh, noble energy, environmental energy. And you're smack dab in the middle of it up here. Yes, yes, we are. Getting and, ready to go. And you've got a map today. Got a I'm map so glad we today. decided to come up here. <laughs> Show us a little bit about what's happening here and what what you think uh, the future will hold for Noble and Wind Power up here. Okay, well, uh, it's, they're putting in access roads, and it's shown in, in yellow. They're, they're working on the access roads now. Oh, they are. To get they them ready for, already. The, for the pads, yep. They've been drawing uh, steady into there. Um, the white squares are where the turbines are going to go. How many? Uh, 65 now. We lost, we lost three along the way. We were supposed to get 68. We got 65. And this shows where they're going to be. This being a Dooley Road, the military turnpike this way. And uh, they claim they're going to get started on them as soon as uh, weather permits and they get the, the proper uh, permits and access roads all, all situated. Now we told you when we came in here that we did a television show right from the beginning <laughs> of the other projects down at Cherubusco and uh, watch them go up. You got to get a copy of that first chapter. I think that'd be great to uh, see what happened because it is it. truly exciting when they put that huge nacelle. He said it was the size of my uh, travel trailer or bigger. They raised that thing up there and just set it down gently. Just gently. And we were there when they put the blades on. I plan on watching them when they go together here in Altona. So you've been up. You've seen the blades up close. And oh yeah. Seen on the truck. They're I mean, huge they're, on the oh truck. Oh my goodness! They, you can't even believe it. They're yeah. a whole tractor trailer truck. And Calvin and I stood at the base of those towers yesterday. There was a pretty brisk wind blowing, and uh, and uh, Dick Decos down there at the the country store. Right. Uh, said they've been turning every single day. He counts the revolutions. He oh, tries my. to guess how much power they're putting out. And the amazing thing I think people don't realize, too, is they go the same speed no matter what the wind is. That's the speed they go. What you see is that no matter if it's a 40-mile-an-hour wind or, you know, 10-mile-an-hour wind, that's it's, what you get. It's truly incredible. Yes. And then they kind of feather out, I guess, as the wind gets stronger, then they they, they lock up or something and they have breaks too strong. Like, yep, slows, slows them, them down so that it doesn't, uh, so that they won't turn too fast. What so. did, Larry, what did you know about this uh, technology before these people came to town? Not much of anything. Nor did, did we. No, no. I mean, we thought it was a great idea from the very beginning because God knows we need alternative energy. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, I... I'm always looking for ways for uh, to improve, and I think this is going to be a great improvement to our town. Um, just in in the way we pay back the people, uh, the taxpayers, and that was my primary concern when they first came. I said, because uh, uh, originally we thought they're they're going to help just the the places where they put the turbines, and my interest was that it could either help everybody or help nobody, and uh, and lo and behold, we got a chance to. Uh, uh, cut our tax rate in half. And, uh, no, you mentioned that just in passing to us a few minutes ago. That's impressive. It is. It is. And I think it, that, that way everybody in town benefits from having the wind, the wind power here, which I think is the way it should be. I think everybody should get a benefit. And, and as time goes on. Time goes on, we'll, uh, we'll take the money that they give us uh, and, and uh, try to keep that tax exactly where it is right today. So if the assessments go up, we'll add a little bit more money to it to keep keep it right in the, the same level it is. So you you weren't in the dark at all on this right from the very beginning. You had meetings and meetings, and there'll be lots of meetings. There'll be more meetings. Lots of books. You can lots. see all those books over there. It's all it's all the project. Is it really? Yeah. So there there was a lot of reading. There was a lot of uh, meetings and. Uh, uh, I traveled out to see them in Fenner by myself. Oh, you did really? Yeah. So I knew what. Uh, well, once they once they sounded like they were coming here, I wanted to know what the people would be in for in town if they got yeah. here. So I didn't go announced. I and I didn't go on a tour. I, I my son and I went out and we. Uh, what a great idea! Just looked do at it. them. Take went got in the middle it. of them and see how see what I if I would like it in my backyard. And lo and behold, that's where they are, my backyard. <laughs> I don't have one, but everybody around me does. But uh, 
they they uh, I I could make my own mind up uh, about the noise, uh, the visual part of it, and and I by by going right there and doing it. And I I went to people that rented trailers that lived that were like 300 feet from them. I went to farms that that uh, benefited. Uh, by having the substation on the property and, and doing the plowing and whatever. And I went to people that didn't have anything to do with them. And I talked to everybody, store owners, and uh, made my rounds. And I had a range finder that I, that I used so I could tell how far away I was. And Did you? Right? Un unbelievable. So, yeah, so I, I kind of, I thought, well, I didn't care for it at 300 yards. I said, well, 300 yards, maybe uh, or they would interfere with people. but. 400 it didn't bother at all and I thought well okay so didn't I could you see. say that you could have a normal conversation and then you wouldn't even be able to hear it it, it yes and 400 yards you couldn't if you're just stop visiting the way we are today you wouldn't be able to hear them at all you'd have to stop and listen and say oh okay I see probably not nearly as loud as it would be in an airplane for example trying to talk you and me you know how you no, always I hear that yeah. rushing sound no I don't think it would be yeah, uh, I didn't get the impression when I was there, at least, you know. So, but your bottom line was not to please uh, Larry Ross, but to make sure that this was a good thing for the town. Yeah, well, our town's had a history of, of you know, people trying to dump things on us. We didn't want that, and Absolutely. we wanted something that would benefit benefit the town. And I think we've come a long way, and I think this is going to help us go that much farther. Isn't that terrific? It sure is. So we, of course, it's hard to set a timetable. Uh, because they never know exactly what they're going to run into once they get started. These other projects have taken longer than they expected, and that's all we heard after we did the first program. Gordy, when are they going to turn? Yeah, right. And people drive by Route 11 between Ellenberg and Malone, and they look at those towers, and they wait to see the first one turning, and you could almost hear them cheering, people stopping with their movie cameras to take pictures when the big... And I can bet Noble Power was cheering too to well, see him turn because of course they were. you know that that's a big, a big uh, issue for them to get them going. That's when they're making money and making power. When you think of how much effort it takes to build, a, you know, the planning stages are just incredible with oh. regulations and paperwork and those meetings that you mentioned before. Right. It's a miracle that any of these projects ever get finished. So it's a tribute to these people. And this is a relatively new company, too. It is. And uh, they stayed right on top of it. They kept you informed every every step of the way. And and we didn't always agree, you know, on a lot of things. And, of course, in, uh, right from negotiations, but even in the planning process. And uh, they worked with us. Uh, and, and thing, you know, I, I thought we were well represented. And I thought well informed and I, and I was glad well, about that. that's that's the bottom line because you have to answer to all your constituents sure. here that's for sure and your family members and friends that live around you not to mention those people who live in the town so you better you better stay ahead of the curve too yeah. a little bit here yeah well we had uh, uh, I've had other uh, wind companies uh, approach me but I, I want to see what what we have and live with them and see how it is before we do anything else. I would like to see how they're going to fit in and how everybody likes them. Yeah, well, I think we can remind our viewers that somebody, most of these contracts are what, 15 years? This is 15 years, yes. Yeah. So, uh, and by then we'll be able to find out where the technology is going, what might happen down the road. Right. And you know, people think, too, they think, well, uh, you shouldn't have done this because if they, if they go out, then you're stuck with these big things stuck on your property. And that's not the case. In the planning process, we, we put a decommissioning uh, clause sure. right in there. So they have to take it down. Everything goes back exactly the way it was. And uh, so so if they, if they got done, we're not left with a mess. I love it. So... This is the beginning. People are seeing this fresh, brand new map on the on the <laughs> wall today, and you saw it for the first time, and it gives you a little perspective about what, how the face of your town will at least change. Yeah, right. And Who knows what it'll do for tourism? Well, that's true too. You, they claim that wherever they go, they have bus tours and they absolutely have people do. coming from everywhere, and uh, that's what they said in Fenner too. They said the biggest problem was trying to get the tractors up the road because the traffic was so much <laughs> heavier. But, uh, but there's also extra traffic when they're building these sure, things. And yeah. Like you said, the access roads have to be built, a factor that the general public might not think about until Calvin and I said, we watched those roads being built, many of them. 
and they have to be pretty strong roads because that, equ that that equipment is heavy stuff. Well, even like on this Dooley Road, um, that's going to be uh, taking a pounding for a while while they're while they're going over the road. In fact, it has, and, and there's holes in it, but they're they're taking care of it as they go. But when they get done, it's going to be paved end to end and all new culverts and all brand new. <laughs> We've been looking at municipal uh, potholes in municipal roads and and county and state roads all over our county we've had a we've just finished folks with one of the most horrendous winter snow wise warm and cold weather that we've that i can recall in yeah. all my years oh, up boy. here so seems to hang right on doesn't it it's, it's uh, still ice out there but fortunately we're recording this on the eighth day of april 2008 and it's temperatures about 54 going to 60 today and tomorrow yeah. and the next day that's our spring we yeah. haven't had any till now <laughs> yeah enjoy it it may be only three days long right. <laughs> don't put that snow shovel away <laughs> that's i right. put three out of four snow shovels away and the next day it snowed for 10 hours yeah well we won't do that we won't do that <laughs> We're going to take a little walk outside, maybe go up near the dam okay. in the Fine Bird Park and talk about a nice project that's going on there and maybe just wrap up our little conversation. Sound good? Sounds good. Thanks, Larry. Alrighty. We didn't get outside yet. We liked it so much inside we decided to stay for a minute. Actually, Calvin had a couple questions, which I think we can clear up because he said... Where do you think the substation might be? So, Larry, point that out for us. Okay. The, the collection point. The power line runs runs almost this way. parallel with the with the military turnpike, and the collection collection uh, station will be right in here on the corner of Dennis Bur Dennis and Cheryl Perrier's property. Because okay. well, there'll be underground collection and overhead collection. Well, it'll be one collection, but it's going to. There will be overhead lines and some under yeah. underground lines. Yes. Because we, Calvin and I, were driving yesterday on the seventh, and we were amazed. We saw them putting the poles up. Of course, we followed the project in steps, sure. and then we saw these lines. What three tiers of lines going up the, up the road, and it's kind of amazing when they're getting close to completion. Well, what, what was amazing to me was the way the puzzle fits together. Um, there, there's so many regulations for these lines. Uh, if you can't go underground if it's so close to wetlands, and you, you have to make sure that it's, it's a very small area or margin of error there for where you can put these things and where you can put the poles and whatever. So they aren't putting them there by accident. They're putting them there because of regulations with wetlands, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever, DEC regulations of all kinds. And, and uh, so there's certain places they can go, property it, boundaries, that kind of thing. It amazes me that these projects ever get completed because of that. A couple other things we want to mention before we leave here. You've only got one town road involved here. Right. And that's which road? The Dooley Road. The Dooley Road here. right up here. Right. So that's good fortune for you. You don't yeah. have to worry about that one. Most of this property does not involve uh, residences. Right, right. It's many, good. many Mostly camps, wooded camps and stuff camps like that. Camps and hunting property right right mm -hmm. and there is going to be a road down here because there has to be access from this end and the purdy road up through here there actually is a dirt road up there through there now right? there's just a trail through there just right? a trail in some places it's better than others it's better coming through from uh from rand hill and this is uh uh, a little better condition than it is all the way through. It gets real rough down in here before you get uh, out to the other well, end. The it'll be improved somewhat because they oh, have to get in there. For, definitely, yeah. Yeah, bringing a lot of equipment down through there. Right. But I think that's a good point to let people know that they'll be going down the turnpike, up or down the turnpike, if you will. They're going across this road, and they're not going to see an awful as much as you would if you had miles and miles of right right the turbines turning you're gonna it's gonna be all uh, in one area pretty much it's yeah. gonna be in the woods the uh, closest to the road to be here in the Dooley road and and off the well a little quite a ways off the rand hill road but the, the Dooley road is going to be the closest that they can see them yeah so it's each project is a little bit different from the other right as to the landscape sure. and how many landowners are involved and whether it's actually going to be next to a silo or out in yeah. a field most of these, to let people know who are watching this program, will be in the woods, actually. Yeah, for sure. And, and the best part about uh, the, most of the reason this was picked was definitely because of the wind. You know, when they did the wind test, this is where the, the wind was the best. So we got the good did. wind here in the North Country. And, <laughs> you know, even down that little hollow where I live in Morrisonville, 
it, the wind blows all the time down there. Yeah. It's something that you don't expect because you accept it as a way of life. Yeah, or you're still... Or when that, you're putting turbines in there, you better have it. Yeah, well, that you better have it. And, and the best part is when they're putting these up, as you could tell when you were uh, watching them, if the wind's blowing at a certain rate, they can't do anything. And, and if it's... Uh, Raining, they can't do anything. If it's this or that, they can't do anything. So they they've got uh, very particular times that they can put these things together. So. And they're very very careful. That's it's like watching paint dry to put that nacelle up there. You know, mm -hmm. you go so far and you have guy wires and guys holding on and everything has to be right. Yeah, it's a, it's. A, I think it's go, exciting to watch them go up. It, it's truly exciting. We got to get a. You got to get him a copy of that original. You you'd love to watch the original video sure we will. did. It was I was like a child because every time you talk to somebody, you learn something. Oh, well, for sure. Because I mean, we've never seen it before. So yeah. everything, even the trucks passing you on the road with with the propellers or anything on them, is yeah. amazing to me. The size of the propellers. Those blades on a truck. And when Calvin and I at the beginning of this segment of our program saw that huge transformer come off Route 122 and come on to Route 11 and that it was a rainy day and we were the only ones there in the media but we wanted to catch it it was they have these huge articulated trucks guy in the back steering like the old-fashioned hook and ladder trucks sure. in the cities and then when they had to turn off Route 11 down in Busco next to the to uh, to Dick's Country Store, he said that was amazing to watch him go around that corner as well. Well, so. even I watched him come off the Northway, uh, and they had, like you said, the back of the truck turns and the front Isn't of the truck turns. Amazing. And, yeah, it is amazing. It, yeah. They can maneuver that for, for any distance and, and, you know, put it up here and then put them in the woods. Yeah. It's amazing. The future of altern or alternative energy is now. Sure is. That's great. All right, now can we leave, Calvin? All right, let's do it. <laughs> Same day, different venue, Larry. We're in Feinberg Park. I love this spot. It has pleasant memories for me and for thousands and thousands of other North Country people, doesn't it? Yeah, young and old. Everybody likes it. Everybody loves the yeah. area. And in the beginning of this program, we talked about the so-called McGregor Project. Because we're looking at a piece of history right here, aren't we? Yeah, this is this was all miners' uh, powerhouse, and uh, came down from the McGregor Dam. They had pen stocks that came down through to, to feed the power uh, the power uh, generators at the powerhouse here. And, uh, People lived inside there. There were at least three apartments. I think three apartments in there. Yes. In the building, some of the workers and others lived there, and. Um, we're here for the mostly for the benefit of the people who haven't lived in the Altona area, who haven't visited Feinberg Park, uh, but this has been a, a location for people to stop and enjoy their weekends and camp here during the summer. Yep. And you got you folks still run it? Still run it as a campsite. We got 54 sites. And, Do you? Yep. 54. Now we got we got septic in some of them. And, no kidding! Yeah. I did not know that. So we're we're moving a little at a time. Now we're recording this, as I mentioned earlier, for the benefit of those people who just turned on the TV on April 8th in 2008. So we're a little ways from the opening of the campsites. When do you what do you shoot for? Um, I think it opens around May 5th, May uh, Memorial Day, May 15th. I think is the opening day for it, actually. So a little over a month yeah. away, and this place will be humming. There won't be the snow, little snow banks that we walk through to get back here. Won't be pine needles. He rakes them all up. <laughs> they, keep, they keep it pretty, pretty clean. Now, what, what I, the, one of the reasons we're standing here is because this will be part of an historical project. Yes, right? uh, Noble Power's going to help us get started on a renovation of the powerhouse, and how far we'll get, I don't know. It's going to be uh, quite an undertaking for sure. Uh, even the roof on that was all made out of uh, copper, so you can imagine the price of it today. Can you believe that? Yeah, it was all copper, and uh, uh, of course the pigeons have taken over. The, the uh, and and I put wire in the windows. I don't know how many times they somehow they get it knocked out of there after a while. So isn't it amazing? So it's kind of a mess in there now, but. Uh, uh, you know, with the help of Noble, I think we can we can make some headway into uh, preserving the, the building. And what we planned on trying to do with it is to make it a, a welcome center for uh, in, in uh, for uh, Plattsburgh State and Clinton Community College uh, 
uh, uh, welcome center for the colleges and, and to show the history of the town and the area. What a terrific idea because when you think about it, as you look at this magnificent structure, it was constructed in the very early part of the 20th century. Yeah, it was. Not, uh, I think the sign on the, on the um, lower dam is 1923, and I, this was probably in before that, so I can this was in. This was bound to be in before that, so we're talking almost 100 years already. Right, right. So uh, you guys are going to have to get in there yourselves and start the cleaning process, or what? Uh, I would say they suggested work bees and stuff. We're going to have a, what we're going to do is start a, um, a, like a club or a um, committee and see if we can get work bees going and stuff to help clean it up and that, get it back great. to get normal. You know, as Calvin and I went out to get in our car to follow you down here to Feinberg Park, the wind was whipping and we held onto our hats and we said, yeah, that's what we're looking at. <laughs> wind for the wind project, right? Wind for the wind project. Well, I want to wish you the best of luck. We'll no doubt be talking with you as your project gets underway and follow this project on your end of the world up here in Altona. Well, good. You know, we'll have you go through the powerhouse some uh very soon we're going to be able to start that now that people can get in here. So Our long-time we'll hometown cable viewers know that it was 1970, 1993, I mean, when when Calvin and the late Bob Venn came up here and did the tour. Did you? Are you the one that took them around? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, my goodness. You were all a young, lot younger than that. <laughs> than we are now, Maggie. <laughs> that was 93, so that's, what, 15 years? That's, that's amazing. So we'll get to do it again. Great. History so. repeats itself. <laughs> Barry, thanks again for your, your hard work in this town, for the people in this town. Uh, it's, it's showing a lot of progress, and we're grateful for it. Well, thank you for your interest in the town of Altona. Our program will continue. Stay with